Collector Archive Services presents Collecting Star Wars. Visit our website at CollectorArchive.com for grading, preserving, and custom displays of your collectible toys, video games, and sports memorabilia. If you enjoy this video, be sure to like and comment below, and subscribe to our channel for more awesome collector videos. Hello toy fans, I'm Chris Whitlock from Collector Archive Services. For today's CAS 101, we have episode 2 in our Vintage Star Wars card back series, which takes an in-depth look at all the various card backs issued in the Vintage Kenner line. I'll be your host as we explore each card back issued from 12 to 92, discussing added characters, special offers, and variations unique to each particular series. Today we have one of the most confusing and controversial card backs, a series complicated by safety revisions to the now infamous rocket firing Boba Fett and Kenner's perplexing decision to tease new characters but not actually release them. Well, not right away anyways. Stay tuned as we delve deep into the second series of the vintage Star Wars line with five facts about 20 backs. Fact number one, eight new characters, six of whom we never knew we wanted, all of whom they forgot to release. Picture this, it's 1979 and you're in the toy aisle. You go to grab a brand new Stormtrooper, you flip over the card and you're excited to realize that there are eight more characters to collect. You glance around the pegs only to see the same 12 figures you've been seeing for the past several months. Confused? You're not alone. For some perplexing reason, Kenner went to great lengths to create eight new characters only to neglect to release them. There are no new figures on the 20A card back. According to Pyrrhus, they didn't debut on the 20B card back either, but we'll get into that mess a little bit more in fact number four. Kenner decided to make all new packaging, reformat the card back design, create and name all new characters, but in the end, gave consumers repackaged versions of the figures they already had. At some point in time, the eight new figures began to appear on the shelves, and it was glorious in that late 1970s sort of way. By the time the eight figures were widely available at retail, not only were our minds spinning with the joy of new toys, we got our first tease of an all-new movie. A majority of the figures were characters that only appeared in snippets in the movie, but allowed kids to flesh out their favorite scenes, most notably the cantina scene. These characters would go on to get fancy names and backstories in the Star Wars Expanded Universe, like Panda Baba or Momo Nadon, but for the vintage run, their names were simple and most notably were descriptions of how they looked on screen. The hammerhead shark looking guy was named the hammerhead. The snaggletooth guy was named snaggletooth. And the guy with the puffy butt on his face was named walrus man. Most of the characters had little to no impact on the story, but instead became fodder for the imagination, allowing kids to expand the Star Wars universe with all new crazy aliens and droids. The figures were Luke Skywalker X-Wing pilot, R5-D4, Greedo, Walrus Man, Hammerhead, Snaggletooth, Power Droid, and the Death Star Droid. Again, while most of these characters didn't do much besides look cool on screen or donate an arm to the cause, these new characters nonetheless represented Kenner's desire to expand the line and gave the Star Wars toy line legendary staying power. Core characters are always nice, but what good is a cantina scene without Greedo? A droid purchase scene without R5-D4? Or an X-Wing fighter chase without Luke suited up and ready to fly? But the most memorable part of the 20-back toy line was that it teased a legendary character from an all-new movie with an action feature we would never get. 20-back bonus fact number one. We really don't care about the first 12. A travesty remedied with the FET offer, the 20 A and B card backs give the original 12 figures hardly any respect at all. Regulated to a small space below the photos of the new characters, the original 12 look almost like thumbnails compared to the large, colorful images of the new characters. It makes me wonder if Kenner was toying with the idea of only featuring the newest characters on their card backs, a theme that Hasbro employs today. Nonetheless, by the time the FET offers started showing up on shelves, the original 12 were thankfully given equal billing as the others, and the trend of featuring every active character in the entire run was here to stay. 20 back bonus fact number 2. Play sets and accessories find their place. It's a minor point, but one that emphasizes how the 20 backs launch that nostalgic familiar feel. It's something we're going to talk about a little bit more in the next section. Starting with the 20A card backs, we get a section for play sets and accessories at the bottom of the card. Unlike the 12 backs, where the drawings of the ships were mid-card, the 20 back put them in their familiar location at the bottom of the card, a trend that would endure through the Droids and Ewoks line. 20 back bonus back number 3. Even more Jawa hijinks. In spite of having been discontinued for over a year, the 20 back inexplicably depicts a Final Cave Jawa, which really makes no sense. If you recall, there was no Jawa action figure on the action figure display stand on the 12-back card, most likely because they were transitioning to the cloth cave. 
Also, if you look closely at the Jawa shown on the land of the Jawa's playset, on the very same card, the Jawa has a cloth cape. I would have to assume that, by the time the 20 backs were being mocked up, the final cape Jawa was a long forgotten memory. And yet, there he was, in all of his vital glory. For many people, this was the only hint that this elusive little gem ever existed. Fact number two. It was the first of times, it was the last of times. While the 12 backs are cherished for being the run that started it all, the 20 backs can be credited as the run that solidified the format. While not as sexy as having the debut moniker, the 20 backs launched a format that would become the norm for the rest of the vintage run. We celebrate the 12 backs for being unique, we celebrate the 20 backs for launching the familiar. Gone forever. Animated drawings of the characters. The easiest to spot and most dramatic change from the 12 to 20 backs was the new way Kenner decided to present the collection. Dropping the long and cumbersome character descriptions and the cool but wildly inaccurate character drawings, Kenner instead presented us with photorealistic images of the toys as they appeared on the shelves. Well, the action figures anyways. The playsets and creature images would change dramatically over the 20 back run, we'll get more into that in fact number 3. Hashtag false advertising. Also making a quick cameo before disappearing forever was the white price box in the upper left hand corner on the front of the card. The price box lasted through the 20A card back, but was gone forever by the 20B. Apparently, stores didn't want Kenner telling them where to place price stickers. They wanted the freedom to place them wherever they darn well please, and so they did. I'm looking at you, Toys Ross, literally slapping price tags over characters' faces. How boo. Here to stay, for a while anyways, individual images of the action figures. Starting with the 20 backs, kids could see the actual pictures of the figures as they would appear in stores. Each character would get their very own cameo box all to themselves. The original 12 characters appear in smaller images just below the new characters with cool themed backgrounds. The 8 new characters are featured in larger photos, each with cool colored backgrounds. This style of displaying figures was very appealing and would stay with us halfway through the Empire Strikes Back line. Also here to stay, collect all 20, the challenge begins. Unique to the vintage Star Wars line, every character ever made was available from their debut card all the way through the end of the run, up to and including the Power of the Force line. Meaning that the obscure characters that appeared for three seconds in the first movie, like Hammerhead and Snaggletooth, would be available for years to come. Kenner would keep a running checklist of every new character incarnation that would include photos of every figure in the line. As the line would add new characters, collectors were encouraged to collect the entire run, and to make it easier, Kenner kept their running total of the number of figures your collection should contain. The number grew to a staggering 92 figures, as described in the 92 back, but the challenge began humbly with Collect All 20, a challenge that many of us strive to achieve today. Finally, making its debut on the 20C was the first front-facing offer and the first free figure giveaway. Boba Fett's on-screen cool tough guy demeanor only reinforced what, by the time The Empire Strikes Back at theaters, kids already knew, that Boba Fett was the enigmatic cool bad guy that everybody wanted. Call it fate, call it destiny, call it good luck and great design, but Boba Fett was a grand slam for Kenner's first figure giveaway. From the moment the Boba Fett offer launched, kids were forever anticipating the next free release and the tease of figures and events to come. Some were better than others, but we always have a special place in our hearts for the first. Fact number three, card back variations. Lots and lots of card back variations. If you thought that the 12 backs got crazy with four or five card backs, the 20 backs get insane with an alphabet challenging 11 variations. From 20A to 20K, the 20 backs can be a handful, although to be fair, there are only three style variations and the rest are just subtle variations trying to make us forget that Boba Fett had a rocket firing feature and to extend his offer. So while there's a lot to digest here, many of their variations aren't significant enough to affect value. Many collectors lump the 20 backs into three main categories, 20A, 20B, and the Fett offer. More advanced collectors, however, do make individual distinctions, so without further ado, let's get into the madness. The 20A and 20B card backs are very similar at first glance. Both are offerless, both have the new and old figures formatted in the same way, and both have a blue theme due to the blue color behind the playsets and the creatures. The 20A and 20B differ in two major ways. First, as I've mentioned previously, the 20A card will have the price box, whereas the 20B will not. Turning them over, the difference between the two can be seen in varying degrees of false advertising. Yes, folks, if there's a theme with 20 backs, all the 20 backs is that Kenner was lying to us. You heard it here first. You know what else you will have heard here first? 
this 20 back bonus fact because Mr. I know everything about Star Wars card back, Chris Whitlock missed it. As impossible as that sounds. The 20 A back is also the last time the LP or long playing logo appears on the front of the card. This logo was found on vehicles and playsets early on as well, but was dropped in 1978 after the 20 A back. Maybe if Chris wasn't so preoccupied with being a know-it-all, he would have noticed that. Just saying. Hey, you like my shirt? Turning our attention to the 20A card backs, if you look closely, you'll notice that the Droid Factory, Cantina, the Dewback, and the Land of the Jawas are all prototype renderings of the actual items. The Droid Factory is missing its ramp, the Cantina has its doors on the wrong side, the Land of the Jawa is missing the little mound under which the Jawa hides, and the Dewback looks like somebody strapped a stormtrooper to a gecko. I'm sure Kenner figured that kids in 1979 would never notice, but they didn't anticipate us growing up, and notice we did. The 28 card backs not only forgot to launch the eight new characters, but also gave us half-cocked renderings of our creatures and playsets. The 20 B back was only moderately better. Looking closely, they did replace the Cantina and the Land of the Jawas with production versions, and they did release the eight figures, but you couldn't find them in the US as most were distributed in Europe and Australia, creating a card back debut controversy that we'll discuss in the next section. But no bait and switch on the 20A or B can prepare us for the swindle from the 20C to 20K. Like I said before, in the USA, most kids didn't encounter the next eight figures until at least the 20C card deck. When they finally got their hands on one, there was a lot of information to take in. First, there was a whole bunch of brand new toys. Second, there was an additional action figure, and he was free. And third, probably most important, was there was a whole new movie on the event horizon that we got to look forward to. The Fed Offer 23 back conveyed a lot of information in a small space, and still to this day holds a premium over subsequent 20 backs. Sporting a Starburst on front containing an animated image of Boba Fett, the 20C was, as mentioned previously, our first taste of an offer on the front of the card. On the back, the card back calls back to the 12 back era with a black dominated color scheme, with the playsets returning to mid card similar to where the ships had been on the 12 backs. In this incarnation, the eight new figures, as well as the 12 classic figures, have the same size pictures, giving the classic 12 figures the respect they finally deserve. But nobody really cares about that. The 20C is all about the rocket-firing Boba Fett, the toy we were promised but was never delivered. Prominently displayed in the upper left-hand side of the card is our first full-scale look at Boba Fett. This was an animated image that looked a lot less like the figure we would eventually get in the mail, and a lot more like the Kit Bash prototype that was pictured on the insert distributed with the action figure collector's case. Next to the full image was a picture of Boba Fett leaning over, allowing his missile to launch from his back. Next to that image, on the right side of the card, were the instructions on how to send away for the figure. Ironically, there is no mention as to what role Boba Fett would play in the Star Wars saga. Remember, in 1979, Boba Fett was not in A New Hope. Actually, neither was the phrase A New Hope. Neither was Episode 4, but I digress. Not until 20E was there any mention of who Boba Fett was or what role he would play in the saga. For the remainder of the 20 back variations, it's essential to know that every variation started life as a Fett Offer 20C, and that every subsequent variation is a series of stickers either covering the Fett rocket firing feature or extending the promotion. Here's a breakdown of the many, many Fett Offer variations. 20C. 20C was the initial release. This card shows the rocket firing Boba Fett and has no stickers applied to the back whatsoever. Many people consider this the US debut of the 8 new characters and it'll command a premium over the remaining 20 backs. 20D. 20D is a 20C, but they put a black box covering the rocket firing portion of the Boba Fett offer. 20E. 20E is a 20C, but they put a yellow sticker covering up the rocket firing portion of the Fett offer. This is the first card back that describes the details as to who Boba Fett was and what role he would play in the new movie. This is also the first card back to mention that there was in fact going to be a new movie. The yellow sticker exists in both square and rounded corners. So from here on out, if I mention that it has a yellow sticker, understand that potentially it could have square or rounded corners. 20F. 20F is a 20D black box version, but they put a red circle sticker extending the Boba Fett offer from 531.79 to 331.80. 20G. 20G is a yellow sticker version, but has a red circular sticker extending the offer from 531.79 to 331.80. 20H. 
20H is a 20G yellow sticker but with a rectangular sticker over the circular sticker, further extending the offer to 1231.80. 20I. 20I is a 20D black sticker version but with a rectangular sticker, further extending the offer to 1231.80. 20J. 20J is a 20E yellow sticker version with a rectangular sticker only and it extends the offer to 1231.80. 20K. 20K is a 20C but has a secret figure offer covering the entire upper section of the card. This functionally changes it from a Boba Fett offer to a, spoiler alert, Boss offer. This will also have a Boss offer sticker on the front of the card covering up the Boba Fett offer. Of all the FET offer variations, the 20C is the most desirable from a value standpoint. However, since every FET offer card is essentially an enhanced 20C, many people over the years have tried to remove the stickers to convert a later version of the card back to a 20C. This almost never ends well. Many 20 back offer FET cards have damage from where someone has tried to remove the sticker. If you find a 20C with sticker residue in the area where the sticker likely has been, be aware that any damage will affect the grade. If CAS can tell that the sticker has been removed, it sadly creates yet another 20 back letter designation, the infamous 20X. Fact number four, the 20 back debut card controversy. For Star Wars fans, the debate continues. Who shot first? Connor Greedo. Huh. But for midnight card collectors, we're more concerned with which do we consider a debut card, the 20B or the 20C. While their alphabetical title seems to apply an obvious answer, distribution patterns make this a McClunky of a debate. It is an agreed upon fact that the first 20 backs to debut were the 20 A's. The 20 B's seem like a likely evolution of the 20 A and likely were released, were released next. So why the controversy? It would appear as though Kenner chose not to release these widely, if at all, in the United States. Instead, in spite of the fact that the packaging is clearly designed for the US market, the 20 B backs seem to have been distributed in parts of Europe and Australia. So if you were a kitty in the United States, the US debut card would have been the 20C. So why should this matter? Because for debut card collectors, there's a history of key pieces that appear on US cards but never saw local distributions or never saw distribution in the USA at all. Examples include the 45 backseat 3PO, the 48A4 loan, and the Power of the Force Anakin. So the question is, if the card wasn't released in the USA, but the figure was clearly on USA packaging, should it be considered a US release? Often the decision comes down to budget. The 20V release of the new eight characters are very scarce. Assembling a complete set can take many years and cost lots of money. Some collectors even have put out bounties to help them tracking down the elusive figures. The cost for its value is prohibitive as well. Any one of the first eight characters on a 20B card can cost two to four times as much as their 20C equivalent. And while the owner will know the significance of the pieces, visually, from the front, a 20B set will look identical to the far more common, far less expensive 21 back card. As far as scarcity, the 20C is no easy run to complete by any means, but they really don't compare to the 20B predecessors in terms of scarcity. As to why Kenner decided to distribute the 20Bs abroad, I have a theory. The Boba Fett offer wasn't available worldwide. The United States and Canada honored the offer while the rest of the world had to wait until Boba Fett was available at retail. That being the case, I believe that Kenner shipped the offerless cards to places where the offer would have been invalid and sent the Fett offer cards to area where the offer would have been valid. It's clear, with, it's clear that with all the card bag variations that Kenner had its hands full of getting these figures to kids domestically. International distribution would have been a nightmare and hence, the USA got the fat offer, and the rest of the world got the not as exciting, but exceedingly rare, offerless counterpart. As far as I'm concerned, my vote goes to the 20Bs as far as the debut card controversy. I may never own that set, I may never even own a single 20B debut card, but I think the intentions were for the figures to get their debut here before they were overshadowed by the fat offer. In the end, each collector can follow their own path and make their own minds, but as far as the Greedo Han thing, we all know that Han shot first. Fact number five, rarities, variations, and ironic figure card back combinations. Rarities. With 11 different card back variations and 20 different characters, getting one of each character on every card back would be pretty tough, especially since not every figure card back combination is known to exist. Believe it or not, there are a group of people who keep track of every known discovered variation. There is a matrix that charts which characters have been confirmed to exist on each card back. This matrix, 
featured in the Facebook group with the uncomfortably long but adequately descriptive name Star Wars Vintage Card Front and Back Combinations Reference Group. This group has done a broad and open source search about which characters exist on which card backs. This research started off as the Kellerman Matrix, a matrix of figure card back combinations published by John Kellerman in his Vintage Star Wars Action Figures book back in the early 2000s. The Facebook group has picked up the torch and is actively trying to confirm the existence of currently unconfirmed figure card back combinations. There are several figures that are confirmed on some of the 20 backs while absent on others. But with so many variations being nothing more than a sticker update of a previous release, variations beyond 20C that do not exist are considered yet to be found or yet to be reported, as opposed to being rare or thought not to exist. It's reasonable to assume that if a 20C was created, then any further variation is likely or at the very least possible. However, that being said, with the three main card back combinations, there are a few notable rarities and omissions. The RCD2 20A is very hard to find and extremely sought after, with only a handful of samples known to exist. However, he is oddly more common than RCD2 on any other 20 back whatsoever, insomuch that he wasn't released at all for the remainder of the 20 back line. Therefore, it's technically true to say that the 20A R2D2 is his most common 20 back, although to do so would be playfully deceptive. C3PO can be found on a 20A and 20B, but not at all on 20C or any of its variations. Just like his tiny counterpart, no fed off for C-3PO has ever been found. Ironically, there is product art for the Boba Fett off for a point of sale display bin filled with package figures and the image of both C-3PO and R2-D2 are shown. Also a chromian of the 20 C-3PO exists. However, neither of these two characters have ever shown up as the confirmed 20C mint on card figure or as open card backs. Additionally, while every version of the first 12 figures exists on the 20A card back, a majority of them do not exist on the 20B. A complete run of 20A card backs consists of 12 figures, the first 12. A complete set of 20B cards consists of 13 characters with only 5 of the original 12 known to exist. The following figures are known to exist on the 20B card backs. Stormtrooper, C-3PO, Jawa, Chewbacca, Death Squad Commander, Luke X-Wing, R5-D4, Power Droid, Death Star Droid, Greedo, Walrus Man, Snaggletooth, and Hammerhead. The rest, a majority of the first 12, are thought not to exist. As with any unconfirmed figure card back combination, there is always a chance that these figures could exist. Check your collection, and if you discover any of the unconfirmed variations, I encourage you to submit evidence of their existence to the Facebook group Tracking Card Backs. The tracking matrix is an asset to the hobby, plus, helping fill the gaps is fun, especially if you have one of the ones that has been previously thought not to exist. Variations. While the 20 back line is void of any significant variation, I'll take a brief moment to talk about the Blue Snaggletooth. For the record, a mint on card Blue Snaggletooth has never existed. Every mint on card version you've ever seen is a custom mint on card figure, which is perfectly fine. These customs are aesthetically pleasing, but are not official kind of releases and should not be confused for a vintage mint on card figure. If you'd like some more information, as well as some fun facts about Blue Snaggletooth, check out our video, Five Facts About Blue Snaggletooth. And that, my friends, is a shameless plug. Ironic card back combinations. When launching the free Boba Fett offer, Kenner was looking to generate interest in their product as well as to keep the packaging fresh. There were many efforts to spread the word about these offers, including store promotions, TV advertisements, as well as the card backs themselves. At the time, Kenner probably didn't put much thought into it, but some of the figure package combinations are playfully ironic, and none does it better than the Fett offer 20 back. The offer, free Boba Fett, was innocent enough, but I ask you, how would the characters on the card backs feel about such a proposition? How would Han Solo or Chewbacca feel about freeing Boba Fett? Luke was never a fan of the Bounty Hunter either, and yet, there they are, promoting to free Fett on their sophomore card back. Ironic card backs are fun, and there are others we'll encounter as we venture through our vintage card back journey, though I'd be remiss if I didn't mention the card back where it all started by asking our heroes to free the most notorious Bounty Hunter in the galaxy. So that's my five facts about 20 backs. Thank you for sticking around as we waded through all the variations and the nonsensical distribution issues. Look out for my next episode, Five Facts About 21 Backs, where the Star Wars logo gets a swan song, new branding is introduced for the new movie, and we talk about a famous bounty hunter. No, not that one, the other one. As always, like, subscribe, and share, and if you have any comments, leave them below. Until next time, keep collecting.